Hey, it's time for voiceover body shop, and we've got an audio masters roundtable tonight. Yes, we, we do. We've got great guests. We got Uncle Roy, who's looking for his whistle, and we've got Cliff Zellman, who's found in, it in Dallas. All right, <laughs> and uh, and Jordan Jordan Reynolds is going to walk through this door any minute. If you know anything about traffic on the one hundred and one, busy actors. We want your questions on home voiceover studios because. When do you get the opportunity to talk to five guys that actually know what they're talking about? That aren't making fries. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and burgers. <laughs> and whatever. <laughs> so get your questions in. Get it in the chat room, either on Facebook or on our homepage. And let us know that you're out there. Because Voice Over Body Shop nope. Audio Masters Roundtable is coming up right nope. now. Nope. From the outer reaches, they came. Bearing the knowledge of what it takes to properly record your voiceover audio. And together, from the center of the VO universe, they bring it to you now. George Widom, the engineer to the VO stars, a Virginia Tech grad with the skills to build, set up, and maintain the professional VO studios of the biggest names in VO today. And you, Dan Leonard, the voiceover home studio master. A professional voice talent with the knowledge and experience to help you create a professional sounding home VO studio. And each week they allow you into their world, bringing you talks with the biggest names in the voiceover world today, letting you ask your questions and giving you the latest information to make the most of your voiceover business. Welcome to VoiceOver Body Shop. VoiceOver Body Shop is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan Signature Products. Source Elements, remote studio connections for everyone. VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website isn't a pain in the butt. VOHeroes.com, become a hero to your clients with award-winning voiceover training. J. Michael Collins Demos, when quality matters. And VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for VO success. And now, live to drive. From their super secret clubhouse and studio in Sherman Oaks, California, here are the guys. It's time for voiceover body shop and audio masters roundtable. We love doing this, and we've covered the universe of voiceover all, but we haven't had an audio roundtable in quite a while. That's the ultimate acoustic treatment: the vacuum of space. <laughs> that's right no it's fun to be back again here in the studio not sick being able to actually shake hands with people and not be concerned about spreading anything what i catch yeah, i can't really. uh, but anyway I, I had my flu shot yeah so good for you. i'm glad so far so good right yeah i'm asking my son this morning get your flu shot i don't remember you don't remember you don't remember <laughs> getting a shot, shot in the arm how many shots do you take every week if you don't remember your flu shot yeah I'm wearing my World War I Hawaiian shirt tonight. Go see 1917. An homage to the movie? Great movie. Yeah. Great piece of filmmaking. Mm. You know, gets my vote, but I don't get a vote. <laughs> Yet. <laughs> it's emotional, right? Exactly. Yeah. 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 And you got to see it on the big screen. Cool. And, and how are you doing? You're obviously feeling better. And Yeah, I've done two, two mountain bike races since I got better. <laughs> a little so winded? Or, okay. uh... No, I feel, I feel great, actually. Exercise seems to help. <laughs> it's good to know. Son of a gun. Yeah. So, so we've got our Audio Masters Roundtable tonight, and I'll introduce our guests in a second. But this is a great opportunity for you to ask your questions on Home VoiceOver Studio, something really specific or something very broad in general. And uh, y these guys know how to talk about this stuff. Hopefully we'll understand them. Um, but they talk our language. They speak a language. That's right. So let's uh, let's introduce our guests, and hopefully the other one will show up here in a few minutes. Uh, first joining us from Dallas, Texas, is our good friend Cliff Zellman, who is now, believe it or not, he is now Director of Talent Development at ACM Automotive, and we'll talk to you about that a little bit, too. Welcome, yes, Cliff. We thank you. Thank you. Great to be here. It's been a long time. It and has. I'm, I'm thrilled to be here. and. And be with be with my boys, but uh, we got to make sure that when we say ACM and, and talent development, all this stuff, that it's automotive because there's ACM. other talent directors and other departments, and 
you know, I, I, I can't take the responsibility of the whole thing, but certainly, uh, yeah, the automotive stuff. Will come, come on in, Jordan. See, now hey. the door swung open and then watch Jordan Rose. Oh, we lost. <laughs> okay, here, get in the, get in the middle seat. <laughs> Da, 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 oh, the middle. Right, oh, right, my, right there. Really? You Let get me, the middle seat. Take off my coat. Okay, he's gonna take off his coat. <laughs> this is this is what we call on the fly broadcasting. I think this is literally the first time Jordan and I have been in the same room since almost right. Yeah. I was starting. I wanted to keep a joke going that we're actually the same person. <laughs> hey. But you just ruined it by showing. Oh, that, oh, oh there we go. We, we can grow facial hair very quickly. Yeah. <laughs> so I wouldn't put that past him. Good All right. you, dude. Jordan. Yeah. <laughs> and joining us from New Jersey is our good friend Uncle Roy from Antland Productions. Welcome, Uncle Roy. I had to dust off the round table, and here we are. They pulled out that tablecloth. All the microphones stayed in place. Amazing. Great. It was amazing. And joining us now off the 101 is... Jordan Reynolds, welcome. Yo, where's the main camera? You got like it's, 20 cameras. It's right it's great. there. Hi. No, one camera right there. <laughs> really simplify things. It, it's really oh, there simple. You go. It's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> so what's everybody been up to? Cliff, you start off. I mean, you're you're now at ACM Automotive. What is that all about? And tell us a little bit about yourself for those millions of people who haven't watched the show before. Well, oh, we, oh there we go. Um, <laughs> interestingly, I got I got a phone call from mark uh as i was in an uber driving from the uh airport on my way to wovo so i'm talking to him i'm standing out in front of the tropicana for about another half hour with all of my luggage we talked about a lot of things a lot of very exciting things a lot of fun things that that i, I you know just says that you know this is something that i can really really fit into and really enjoy and then I had three days with 150 of my best friends, and I can't say a word about it. I was, <laughs> you know, I'm sitting there like, you know, NDA, man, you can't talk about because we didn't, you know, really solve anything. We didn't come to any uh, conclusions, but, you know, we planted the seeds and all this stuff. And, and uh, in his ultimate wisdom and brilliance, he uh, announces January 1st, nine o'clock in the morning that I joined and I'm joined the team. I'm having brunch with my family. I said, you know, whoa, this is kind of, you know, a weird time to post, but boom, like within 20 minutes that, you know, all of our friends were on there and talking about it and, and congratulations. And it was, and it's fun. I've been working on a database. I'm focusing on bringing in uh, the talent that ACM already has, focusing on automotive, bringing them up. And really my main focus, and then we'll be done with this, is uh, getting everybody up for absolutely undeniable presentations. When we hit up clients, agencies, and dealerships, I want to go in with three voices. I don't want to do 50. I want to say one you'll pick, two you won't. Undeniable presentations, and it's going to be fun. So very excited. Uh, for anybody that just checked in, my I still have a very good relationship with Radio Vision. I uh, did a bunch of spots last week, um, but I'm out of the everyday editing basic editing revisions multiple revisions more revisions um but no burn bridges we love each other and it's a 24-year solid relationship and we're figuring out ways that you know we can help each other mutually so it's it's all good all right well sounds very exciting awesome. thank you it is it's really exciting uncle roy what have you been up to besides eating bagels <laughs> <laughs> I forgot to go get the bagel prop to put on the, the Emmy, but we'll do that later. Uh, first of all, I'm wearing my VO Atlanta shirt because I know Dan <laughs> said about his, you know, his uh, World War One shirt there. Uh, hope to see everybody at VO Atlanta. Uh, I've been working on the third audio book with my 10th grade English teacher, who when we met, I was 15. And he was 25. Don't do the math. <laughs> he's in his That's five years. So he, right? there would be no he, yeah. So, well, that math you can do. Uh, he's in his <laughs> retirement and he just he's he's an author narrator. And he used to direct me in the school shows. And now I get to direct him and do sound design and produce him. We've had numerous nominations in voice arts awards and Audis and all those things. And uh, we're going to submit for a Grammy for 2021. See what happens. Uh because the Emmy is lonely. It needs a Grammy. It needs something. And I don't have a voice arts award. I have the nomination uh, bling. That's pretty cool. Um, and it, it, for my money, a, a nomination is a win. 
you know, if you're up there with five or six other people, that's enough for me. So uh, just between that and uh, children's theater and, uh, you know, demos and coaching and every other aspect of what we do. And teaching the world how to use a, Adobe Audition. A lot of way. tech support with <laughs> Adobe Audition. Yes. That's, that's We're all very game. grateful for that. Of course. There's nothing to it. <laughs> to the right is louder. Everything else, you know, who cares? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but when you get your, like, like Cliff had mentioned in one of the posts, he said, yeah, so when I get audio from a person that Uncle Roy uh, showed them how to do it, the audio sounds right. So Right. All right, we'll get into that a little bit, too. Jordan, yep. aside from being out of breath, what have you been up to? Oh, God. <laughs> Running all the way to get here. I ran all the way from Burbank. <laughs> um, man, what have I not been up to? Uh, 2019 was crazy. Lots of video games, anime, uh, some Adult Swim stuff, um, like games like Astral Chain, the Tom Clancy Division 2. Some pretty, they won some awards and stuff, I don't think, for the voice acting or anything. but <laughs> Well, I think maybe one did, but anyways. Um, so just for some really big franchises. So that's been really fun commercials, you name it. So kind of the whole gambit. It's, it's nice to keep it Great. mixed up and then demos production when I can fit it in <laughs> <laughs> people who have done demos with me are, they're very, they're, they're lucky in the fact that I got them done because <laughs> it's like, you know, it's, I, I fit them in where I can. I love doing them, but it's, you know, anyone who knows any, any sort of demo production, it's like, if you do it right, it takes a long time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, 2019 has been crazy. I'm looking forward to 2020. All right. Yeah. We're That's only 13 good. days into it. So I know. We're... Lucky 13. Yeah. Again, we told, we told everyone there would be no math, but, uh, <laughs> how many days left? 365 minus 30. No, kidding. 52, 50. Sure. Yeah. 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 I think <laughs> That's actually right. Divided by, yeah. Okay. Anyway, so this is an audio masters roundtable. These are, we're five guys that know each other very well because we we pretty much have the same opinion about home voice over studio audio. But I'll throw out the first question here, and that is, uh, I want everybody's thoughts on the state of the voiceover industry, you know, somewhat maybe from a technical point of view, in 2020. Because... You know, as I like to say, the more things change, the more things change. <laughs> so, uh, Jordan, why don't we start with you? What are your thoughts on that? It's not, all right. Like a blended technical? Yeah. Blended <laughs> because technical, it's like what angle we go or, or just voiceover in general. Okay. Um. Well, in general, just everything's getting faster, faster, faster. It's like. It's like the most, the least things that on paper seem like they'd be the least important. Like we made a new internal video to show how to, you know, book a calendar, a vacation request. We need it in 20 minutes, you know? <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. Like, seriously, like, it's it's like anything, like, internal stuff to, you know, I'm not complaining. I'm just saying it's, you have to be ready for it as a voice right. talent. Absolutely. So it can be a little stressful, but, hey, if you got your tech stuff set up and everything, um, and you got a home studio that you're confident in, because I know a lot of people, especially in this town where they have the advantage of going into local studios, yeah, they are used to just, oh, I'll just book out a studio. I think that's becoming, if you if you're branching out online and not just booking through your agent, which you should be if you want to build, you know, build your business. Um, it's becoming super fast and just you got to be kind of tied to your studio to a degree. I mean, it's the reason I was late. <laughs> I couldn't get away as fast as I wanted to. So and in the tech field, everything is getting like simpler. Finally, it, like more everything's getting virtualized. Simpler but we can probably and, talk about that later as far yeah. as the really nerdy stuff. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. And cheaper. Yeah, like, I know. Yeah. Like, like it sounds so good for how cheap cheaper. it is. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Roy, what do you think? What's up with all this direction on all the auditions being the same? Not announcer. You're talking <laughs> to your best friend. Uh, I, I, it's so confusing. I think the direction is we'll know it when we hear it. Yeah. Yeah, really. <laughs> That's it. Be, because <laughs> and people call me and they want me to direct. But based on that direction, it's almost meaningless. Right. So I I don't know if it's that the directors and, and uh, people in the industry are that much younger and they've heard all those catchphrases, not announcery, and you're talking to your best friend. And that's not necessarily bad direction, but every <laughs> every audition comes in with the same the same thing. So there's like a trend of misdirection going on or non direction or generic direction. Right. So who's booking all this stuff then? 
Clearly, Jordan is. <laughs> Oops. Yeah, he can't make it. I, no, I, I think I think just I think there's a new generation of of uh, producers and copywriters and stuff coming in. Like they're getting to the level to where they can make decisions. Yeah, make make decisions beyond yeah. just writing the copy. They're like they get to direct and and pick the voice talent and direct it. I just said that twice. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> um, but I think what's happening is they're, you know, I can relate because I come from that generation, the millennials. And they're impatient. I don't relate to a lot of millennial stuff, especially this, but they're like, they kind of seem, they just, they want it, like I said, they want it quick. They want it, they don't, it's just, they don't want it spent. There's, if there's too many things in, in the chain of command to get what they need done, it bothers them. They're used to Uber, like everything is on demand. Everything's an app, right? Yeah. Everything's on demand. Yeah. yeah so I think that's coming into play. And so they don't, they have these bland specs and even bland copy. Let's face it, there's some pretty bland copy where there's, they write, yeah. you know, like all the scri- the scripts are like, what about this? Have you thought about this? Oh, how about that? Or this? Mm-hmm. You know, all those commercials where right. it's like, oh, yeah. it's very difficult for us voice talent to, to do that because we have no context. The demo scripts are better than what's really out. There. Absolutely. <laughs> Dude, I know. <laughs> always. So I, I think that's better writers. Yeah, yeah. I think that's not to excuse it. I think that's what's happening. And so the only way to cater to that as a talent is just to really be like, you just interpret it the best you can and be your best self. Don't try to be exactly like non-announcer and clean just try to just bring your authentic self bring your own opinion to it because i think they're liking more opinionated reads yeah than just safe reads cliff well i agree with jordan you know and voice artist you know we use that word artist let's not throw that away you know it's the artist in you and the artist in the in the reader to to know the script to, to pick up the script the clues in the script uh count how many exclamation points there are you know um <laughs> I think that that you're right that there is a new generation. What that new generation is a new ear, and um, it's calmer. It's 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 better actually. I mean, this is coming from a guy that's been doing automotive for 24 years. You know? <laughs> so you know, I love the 80s. I love the 90s, man. I love that slamming stuff. And but you know what? I I don't know how really how effective it is anymore. I think people just want to just want the facts and and the fact that, uh, like Jordan said earlier, Uber's right there. Uh, everything is an app. Everything is one click away. I want my price one click away. I want my payments one click away. So I don't know what the hell that has to do with what we're talking about, but it's just simpler, you know. And and as far as the conversational read, yeah, it really is. We'll know when we hear it. Clients tell me all the time. Well, we'll know it when we hear it. Here's another thing I've noticed is that the good talent out there are getting better and they're getting better quicker and they're getting really, really good. Those that want it instant and those that, you know, are going online asking for free advice and how do I do this and what's the best this and what's the best that, which is actually a great list of just basically every product ever made that a headphone <laughs> or a microphone right. or, you know, I mean, you've got the list, you got 400 comments right there, but those that are really working it and really understanding, you know, all the new challenges and all the new advantages that voiceover has given everybody, not just the East and the West coast, but right in the center of the country as well. And those that are doing it are getting really, really good. So keep it up, man. Just keep doing whatever what all you guys out there are doing. Just practice, record and read and train. Yep. The other aspect of uh, instant gratification is now nothing against source connect, because I think it's a great thing, but if you don't have it, uh, you know, there's nothing wrong except for the non-instant gratification. Cliff and I used to, you know, whether whether they had ISDN or whatever, uh, you would so you'd send it, you know, email it in a in a you know in a week transfer or something. You you, you really can't wait until I put my high pass filter over the whole thing and send it. You really want my noise, my crappy <laughs> noise floor and what you know whatever. So um, I don't know. I think I and. Source Connect now, I think, is is good enough. It's certainly better than a phone patch, and and we were used to a phone patch used to be good. We just want to hear the read. We don't you don't have to hear the quality, you know. Yeah, I mean, I think, if, uh, go ahead, Clay. Well, I'm, a, a big trend right now that I'm seeing more and more, and and Roy and I and those of us on the engineering side have known about it for a long time. But a lot of you guys are using RX seven, um, yeah. just. Damn, I want to buy stock in, in Isotope, man, because I'll tell you, they're, they're year last year, just for VO alone. But there's some great stuff in there. So, um, you know, it, it can help. And I think that's a great trend. I think that that 
simple yet effective and and high quality plugins can really help you guys if 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 you do uncle roy first or dan <laughs> Leonard, first. Use or right. george first or george yeah well, use or it. jordan first if you or actually jordan, do yeah. technical stuff but yeah. you know getting all that stuff done to where you're doing your day-to-day reading editing shipping read edit ship rx7 is awesome i'm sure you yeah. guys agree get those mouth clicks out yeah yeah you see I'm, I'm always of the belief that you do everything you can physically yeah to get your recording space right and your read right and you know your mouth noise right (laughs) so you don't have to do all this stuff that you don't understand and then have to spend a year learning how to do it properly that's so old school man (laughs) because i am old school because i'm old preparation (laughs) preparation again for that millennials don't prepare dan (laughs) every audio file needs help one way or another i've been a yeah. thousand years of doing this y'all sending me mp3s and waves and aifs and all that stuff there's always something in why there. the hell are we still using mp3 <laughs> really you can send small. a big file now it's as opposed right. to a wave aac oh, sure. or any a of new, Orbis, much better one same but, but for the same file yeah, file. man people are used to it well Everybody's ac 128 it. so mp3 and mono 128 we all use it yeah. sounds fine right AAC 128 is like a huge step in yeah. quality. Yeah. And everybody's software can use it. But we're stuck on a 15. No, this is MP3. M, it's called MPEG 2 Layer 3. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. I remember testing it on my PC in 1992 in Virginia <laughs> Tech, where you'd have to go to lunch and come back to encode one song. <laughs> Did you like it? I mean, were you impressed? Well, it was it was neat that it was smaller and now yeah. it could actually fit a song on a yeah. floppy disk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think we just use it because it's, you know, we've just been using it for so long. I, you know what? I could go the rest of my career without ever making another MP3 again. It's fine with me. Yeah, I mean, if there's still an email attaching issue, which is another rant about people mm-hmm. still attaching files to, MP, yeah. to emails. But... Whatever it works, it's easy. So it needs yeah, there needs easy. to be a friction free way of <laughs> <laughs> three and a half inch flat. <laughs> yeah, I think it's I got, got a record yeah. around Cliff, it somewhere. Cliff, what about your five and a half inch? I have a yeah. right here. The, you had the five and five and a quarter. Quarter, right? see, quarter inch. Yeah. Geek check. I, was, I was given. I know. I was given. I was given a quarter boost. <laughs> <Oops. laughs> yeah, it's a debt. What else do you want? Yeah, you, you got any reel to reel? Hell yeah. I've got, got a reel to reel. I got reel to reel. Got any uh, one? Right, hang on. Go. There we go. <laughs> Always within arm's reach, my friend. He <laughs> yeah, barely a, had to stand up. Like Cliff's going that. back into his closet. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> like a digital. <laughs> I want to see some. Oh, you know what, Cliff? Here, uh, here's the audio cassette. Cliff, I want to see some two inch. Oh, I'll go two inch, Cliff. The... Never mind. I have plane. a giant two. anvil case of floppy disks it's okay so now i wanted to see two inch i'll bring up the two inch when we take a break all right okay <laughs> <laughs> what oh. were we talking about anyway well the next question was trends, trends. 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 yeah three is no good yeah and, and and i and i really wanted to talk about what are the technical trends that we're seeing i mean because now cliff you mentioned rx7 yeah and i you know i find that most software especially adobe audition has yep. everything you could possibly need in order to send a file out. Not if you're extra clicky. Not if you're extra okay. clicky. I mean, you can you yeah. can uh, auto heal, uh, you know, spot things, but uh, to put it over, if you're doing audio books and you're medium clicky, uh, a friend of mine used to, she said, if I spent all day editing, I, maybe I could do three chapters. She sent me, I said, send me a chapter. Two and a half minutes, she had her life back, so. Let me let me ask you this. A well-known demo producer that we all know told me that he leaves that thing, the RX7 mouth to click in its default settings, period. Oh. And doesn't touch any of them and says it's perfect. Can we talk guys, about for that? that? What person? do you guys have to say Go about for it, that? Oh, I got an opinion on that. Go for it. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, you know, clicks come in all frequencies and lengths. Yep. Yeah. It needs it needs to be it needs to be zeroed in on. Now, okay, if we're just talking audition. Default's right? a good starting point. Yeah, so it, it starts at the uh, it's there's a there's a, a low frequency and high frequency selector, right? There's a bias yeah. thing we can say tilt it towards the low. Yeah, so if it's more like towards a, the high or a yeah, I'm I'm I can't yeah. do it perfectly, but sure. you know, so there's the higher <laughs> clicks, lower clicks. You have that one, and then you have another one, which is the strength. The right. default strength is 4.0, and yeah. I hear a lot of talent use it 
and it's fine for auditions. Okay, it's just an audition. Right. But I'm hearing people do that for a lot of their final audio. And in my opinion, and I know I have more sensitive ears than we all do. Than You're most, picky. The, You're young. You can too. hear. <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah. But you hear it. It too more often than not. It's softening the P's. It's taking that attack off of a a P, not a plosive. Just right. like there's like a nice sharpness to a P, like that kiss sound, if you so will. It turns into a B almost. Yes, and then uh, T's even get a little too softened. Turn into so, a D. And B's just get <laughs> mushed. Not all of yeah, them, but yeah. it happens pretty often. Yeah. On multiple voices, I'm not just saying mine, because I've edited a lot of VO in different booths. And so that's just one thing to be aware of, talent. Like if you're the 4.0 setting can be a, a little, little too aggressive, in my opinion. If you're I like two and a half, maybe. Yeah, I yeah, do everything at two and a half. I start there, put that on I'm everything, and it rarely is too much. So that's my two cents. Do it till you hear it, and then back it down. Yeah. Yep. So, exactly. and I'm talking like not for auditions, whatever. 4.0 is fine, but if you're if you're well, declicking some stuff you send to a client, 4.0 might be a little aggressive, and, and if you have a much. pretty good engineer, they're going to hear it. All right, is the mouth oh, declick yeah. absolutely worth it over the regular declick? Oh, hell yeah. Oh yeah. It's oh really yeah. Good. Yeah. Okay. I think very so. specific. Yeah. So people people got crazy and bought elements and you can put the same <laughs> settings into elements but it's not the same. Uh -huh. Yeah, that the the, the generic declick was oh I have some vinyl and I'm transferring it it's got some clicks it'll take the clicks yeah. out. Yeah. That's yeah. what it was yeah. made for. Sure. Now what yeah. what I'm hearing now people send me audio all the time and you know and and I immediately within 2 seconds it's like they're using RX-7 or they're using a, a general a noise yeah. reduction program. Audacity. And, and they've turned it way up. And it, it, it's, you're losing the entire top end and things are cutting out. And they're like, well, so-and-so told me to do that. We won't mention so-and-so's name, but right. we know. There are <laughs> several of those so-and-sos. And then that so-and-so. Yeah. None of them uh, are sitting in this room or are online with no, us right now. No. But <laughs> of course they're not. Uh, I mean, it, it, it's guys that get audio because, you know, Roy, because, you know, you're, you're producing stuff and Cliff, you're producing stuff and you're getting stuff online from people. I mean, what do you tell them? I know what I tell them. It's like, you know, it, Dr. When it hurts, you know, I, when I do this, I'm like, well, don't, don't do, do that. that. You know, it's, <laughs> it's pretty simple actually, but I think there's a, there's a high level of miseducation, misinformation and hype about a lot of these programs why use them if you don't know how and they are not the end all you know one size fits all solution you know everybody likes to experiment if you go into adobe audition and you dial up the compressor the the tube compressor which i love but you put it where it says voiceover oh, God. Yeah, uh, you know, it's like <laughs> yeah. it's like the threshold is minus 16 and an eight to one ratio. It's ridiculous. Six to one. <laughs> you have to know what you're doing. <laughs> you, know, you know, all of this stuff, yeah. all of this stuff, I they are all it. tools, yeah. you know, and it's, it's and if you have it in your tool chest and I'm going to say something right now, I have a chaotic, chaotic eyeball. Some people love it. Some people great volleyball. It. <laughs> it's sitting over there in the corner. If I ever need it, up there. I use it. It's a tool. RX7, all this stuff, DS, just clickers, compressors, you know, they're tools that got to be no, you know, you got to know how to use this stuff. Otherwise, you get stuff that sounds like this. You know? Well, you brought it up. So when well, do you use, when is a good scenario? I have one, I have my thought on it. But what is one really good use case for a chaotic eyeball? When I'm in a room that's just incredibly echoey mm -hmm. and I can get the voice to go right up to it, I'm using a microphone that's directional. Um, I have I have audio that I've done for X sessions in VO Atlanta with it and without it. It's unbelievable. It's day and night difference. Um, but I'm using it in a not the best situation. Yeah, it's a band. So obviously, when obviously when we work, we want to be in the best situation that we can be in. Yeah. And then we don't use it. But right. to, I, I'll tell you, I'd rather have it than not have it. Yeah. Well, I have clients that send me samples all the time where they've got the Chaotica or the Reflexion yeah. filter or whatever that it is. Nothing. And then they're yeah. in their walk-in closet with all the clothes. Mm -hmm. So the first <laughs> yeah. thing I do is say, take that thing off the mic. Yeah. Yeah. It's not, yeah, right. No, it's not an everyday it's thing. Like, wow. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and, and if you want should, one, uh, if if you really want one, all you have to do is go to a voiceover conference. Eventually, you're going to win one. I, I, that's They're going to give you one. That's how I got mine. <laughs> I got mine. I'm thinking there's a I profit margin to be made on this. You know, <laughs> it's George, just a tool, you guys. It's just George a tool. and I. George and I were at the uh, NAB show when it first came out, and 
you know, the video they had was pretty impressive. The guy singing in an echoey thing and then singing with the eyeball. Yes, actually, in New York. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. I yeah. remember. I do remember. All right. Well, yeah. we'll be right back with, with Uncle Roy, Two Cliff, and tape. Jordan. That's right. And uh, we're going to take a break <laughs> and talk to some of our sponsors here. And we'll be back with your questions and our questions right after this. This is the Latin lover narrator from Jane the Virgin, Anthony Mendez. And you're enjoying Dan and George on The Voice Over Body Shop. Well, hello there. I bet you weren't expecting to hear some big voiced announcer guy on your new orientation training for Snapchat, were you? This is Virgin Radio. Well, okay, we're not that innocent. There's jeans for wearing and there's jeans for working. Dickies, cause I ain't here to look pretty. She's a champion of progressive values, a leader for California, and a voice for America. It's smart. It's a phone. It's a smartphone. But it's so much more. It's a, the files are ready. Don't forget to pick up the eggs. What time is hockey practice? Check out this song. It's the end of the road for Rick. It's just you and me, Rick. When hope is lost. The I-8 from BMW. Who said saving the planet couldn't be stylish? Hey, it's J. Michael Collins. Bet you think I'm going to try and sell you a demo now, huh? I think they speak for themselves. But I will give you my email. It's jmichael at jmcvoiceover.com. Now, if Dan will stop waxing his mustache for a minute, we'll get back to the show. As a voice talent, you have to have a website. But what a hassle getting someone to do it for you. And when they finally do, they break or don't look right on mobile devices. They're not built for marketing and SEO. They're expensive. You have limited or no control. And it takes forever to get one built and go live. So what's the best way to get you online in no time? Go to voiceactorwebsites.com. Like our name implies, voiceactorwebsites.com just does websites for voice actors. We believe in creating fast, mobile-friendly, responsive, highly functional designs that are easy to read and easy to use. You have full control. No need to hire someone every time you want to make a change. And our upfront pricing means you know exactly what your costs are ahead of time. You can get your voiceover website going for as little as $700. So if you want your voice actor website without the hassle of complexity and dealing with too many options, go to voiceactorwebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. Audiobook narration. ACX. Audible. Rights holders and success as a narrator. That's what you want, right? How about a free class on how to make that happen? Even better, how about three free classes on how to become a successful and happy audiobook narrator? It's about to happen, and all you need to do is let us know you're interested. Go to acxmasterclass.com to jump on the alert list for the upcoming 2020 training that they're offering. Absolutely free. That's acxmasterclass.com. The first class is Friday, January 17th, and they'll continue for the next week. To be able to watch these classes, just let us know you're interested. Visit acxmasterclass.com. That's acxmasterclass.com. This is Bill Ratner, and you're enjoying Voice Over Body Shop with Dan Leonard and George Whittem, VOBS.TV. It works great. And you can read. And we're back. Hey, we're back, Cliff. We, Look, we as are promised. Back. We oh, gave you oh, warning, didn't we? Oh, boy. <laughs> Two inch. Two inch baby. reel. All right. <laughs> How much is a reel of that tape these days? It's got to be fortune. Three, four hundred dollars, uh, I would think. Yeah, about four hundred bucks. I have really? a tweaker. <laughs> let's, is, let's align the bias come on i can still do TV. it oh i have no problem i'd probably I still be at a, working in a studio in, the, in philly if i knew how to line a tape machine when i magnetic interned. reference <laughs> laboratory catalog number j215687 200 uh, nano levers 30 inches per second you never had to align uh, a tape no, machine. No, 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 uh, get a big no, bulk I'm, eraser I'm <laughs> I yep. wanted to be Mr. MRL. I wanted I wanted that kid. You wanted to be that guy, 200 yeah, yeah. nanometer. Full track recording with no compensation what for multi track. So the beta reader reads zero decibels. Is that like the customer <laughs> service? Yeah. I have no idea. What are you what So are much you for decorum. For? You guys are uh, me up. Anyway, uh, we're, we're talking about for the MRL guy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's commercial? No, no, no we're live right now. This is I, I, actually the show now. Yes, believe this is it or the not. fun part of the show. Yeah, we got Uncle Roy. We have <laughs> Cliff Zellman and uh, Jordan Reynolds here with us in Voice Everybody Shop, and we are talking about 
voiceover Whatever audio, which is y'all yeah. got a master, which is why you watch this show every week. But yeah. these are these are the four guys here that really know their stuff. Well, I know a thing or two too, but anyway, <laughs> you learn things. Yeah. These guys uh, are okay. Let, let, let me ask you this, guys, and throw this out, because, again, as we get a lot of audio from people, what are the biggest mistakes that people make? And I would, I would tend to lead off with that, with they use way too much stuff. Cliff, what do you think? Well, it's a lot of mistakes to be made, actually. <laughs> I mean, what um, do you... I, I, in let, general, let, low level. Yeah. Well, let me... Let me stuff that's coming in at, at, at minus 20. Minus 20. You know. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah but if you record a 32-bit, does it matter? Not and really, but I don't and want. Who to knows what thirty-two bit is? So well, I don't want to get a little bit across yeah. there. Um, recording too low, um, bad uh, mic technique. Yeah, um, bad environment. I know you know Danny you, you, and and uh, you guys will talk about that. But really, to, to me, the, the main thing that I get that that I, I would just like a little more gain. You know, give me minus. Five, minus what three. what should be the peak? Now we've set the standard. We actually set the standard for the industry here. Yeah, we tried. Well, we, we tried. Now you know whether you know everybody agrees with it or not is, is you know a whole other deal. <laughs> let's, yeah. let's let's each of us say what our standard is. All right. So what what's the standard for modulation when you're recording? And I and I'm of the belief that you know you shouldn't it shouldn't have a lot of hot peaks that you should be consistently trying to peak between say minus six and minus four perfect sold yeah i'll take it thank you very much that's all for tonight everybody. <laughs> I, I tell them between minus six and minus nine with an occasional minus three if it goes yeah, over a little right. bit because we're gonna do it fix it later you know depending upon the material and and what what the final mix is going to be you know sometimes good to have a good it's solid. also it also has to do with your uh with your performance technique yeah. We get a lot of files. The first syllable is hot, oh, and yeah. the whole rest is down. They that's, take a breath. That's unprofessional. It that's, builds up. The first syllable blasts out, and then everybody's the same. Yeah, that reeks of yeah. amateur. I mean, yeah, that's it, it does. It's, it is. It's yeah. When I get a file and I see that, I know that they're, they're they haven't been at this that long. You know, I yeah. know and, for it, a fact that it's the audio file sent to me from the general manager of the dealership. <laughs> <laughs> On a cassette recorder. Right? <laughs> it, yeah. it goes down to nothing. Yeah, trails you know, off. And, and yeah, then the, 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 you know you're ramping up. You're doing volume gain. Right. You're doing clip gain. You know. And, right. Whoosh, well, let me ask you this: so, whoosh, so whoosh, peaks between minus six, up. minus three, what are minus four? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Does a clip? Yeah. It, does a clip matter if you can't hear it? No. Yes. In the woods. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, it gives a but shit. Does a clip on. matter? <laughs> okay. Yeah, we've got the ability me. to eliminate clips and not, not clips. Yeah, but if you can't yeah. hear it, if you can't cares? hear it. If it's yeah, not it audible, like not you can have clips hurts. that aren't. You know what? Audible. Thirty hertz, we can't hear it, but it's chewing up our stereo bus. It's chewing up, you know, a lot of headroom and stuff. I, uh, yeah, no clips. No I clips. don't I mean I don't like them, right? I mean I, I train like people not no clips. But what if so? What if you record with peaks at say minus twelve to minus twenty? And record in twenty four bit, and then normalize to minus three. But okay, yeah, but why? That? Depends on your room. Kick it up. Yeah, you got a good. I mean, am I bringing up noise floor? Why not bring it up? Know? And the misconception is, well, when I bring up the game, the no the the noise floor comes up. No shit. <laughs> and the same thing happens when I know, you normalize I love that it. one. I, I get files from some of the levels that like peak at minus 20, and they're like, but if I turn it up, the noise gets louder. I'm like, oh. exactly. Oh. Somewhere down the louder. road, we're going to have to turn that up. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. I, I've been um, using a lot of photography as an analogy the last few months. Ooh. Makeup and photography both, because most people tend make to get that. Tonight. Thank you. <laughs> Um, but I've been using that as an analogy because I think most people can identify that with that better than with audio terminology sure. and audio things. I've been talking about with mic placement, having it be in focus. You mm -hmm. know, when it when the camera's not quite in focus, you notice it. You know, the eyes aren't. If the eyes aren't focused, everybody hates that. Like the eyes have to be sharp. And I think of mic placement that way. And then you know, and then the makeup thing is the processing. You know, oh. so, and people say like. If you don't, if you show up at the makeup chair in the morning for the movie with makeup on, they're going to hate you. <laughs> and that's the job. They don't yeah. want the processing on the, on the file for the job. But sometimes they say, will you please show up makeup ready, you know, or camera ready? And you better have that, the right processing on it. And sometimes they don't know any better. 
So you better show up makeup or camera uh, ready yeah. or you're screwed because <laughs> it's going to be a no terrible artist. There. Yeah. So that's been my little goofy analogy. And I think people that's get great. that. I think yeah. that's neat. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. So when do you use processing? I mean, I know what I, I know do. know how to use it. Yeah. It, well, again, if you don't know what yeah. something does, I generally tell people don't use it. Or if uh, you can't hear what it does. Or if you can't say you add something and you don't even know what happened, you better undo it. Yeah. Because somebody else is probably going to hear what the hell you yeah. just did to it. And even more importantly, why would you do something? Yeah. I think I find a lot of people just like, well, I was told that you got to use compression. You got to use this. You got to use noise reduction. And I'm like. We but you're, the, you're in a closet. File, uh, two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. Or last yeah. week on the Tech Talk. Yeah. That was a prime example of the guy did everything on the acoustic side, the soundproofing. He really did a huge amount of work to get it. And then he layered on two double helping heapings of noise reduction. Oh, and oh, decimated the art. I mean, it was terrible. And it was a, just a prime example of, you know, people using the tools because either someone said you should or they just have the YouTube them. video. I bought the things. So I'm going to use them, you know. It's gilding the lily. Yeah, right. exactly. Well, why don't we why don't we take an audience question while we while we have some time here? And we've got one from um, who is that? My Ooh. my my pocket is doing weird things now. <laughs> uh, hey, I'm not looking. We had a, yeah, we had a hey, question. Cop. Yeah, we we had a we had a question from Justin Brown. Hey, Says, buddy. I've noticed that the normal position for a four sixteen seems to be in a downward forty five degree ish. Angle, is there any reason I can't or shouldn't be angling it up? Asking for a friend. <laughs> well played. Uh, can I stop? maybe go for it? Your four sixteen is floating. Uh, yes, I, I yeah. got an idea. I think I have the tip of a four sixteen right here in the frame, right? a ninety degree. Um, uh, this is Almost. actually in like boom op position, yeah. which means that it's literally straight down. This is video, and there's for a good reason. Well, first it's video one and two. I want to be able to do this and still sound like I'm We're on mic. We're just turning for you listening to the podcast. Right, for those listening, I've literally just turned like almost 180 degrees. I'm facing yeah. to my left at Jordan, and now I'm facing all the way to the right, and I still sound on mic. Normally with a shotgun mic, if you pointed it at an angle, as soon as you do this, you're off, you're off oh, yeah. axis. It's, so, a, it's a whole different world. Right. But for a voiceover, I think the reason you don't point it up is because of the things you don't want it to hear. Right. Like you're not whistling, you know, <laughs> it's not whistling. <laughs> plosives, also, you know. Also, when you're reading and you've got your copy in front of you, yeah, usually the copy is below eye level. Your head Practical. is downward, right? Have yeah. like this, so so you know you're angled going forward. If you're going to read up like this, <laughs> yeah, you can do that. You know, if you're going to be reading off of the ceiling, but I think that if your your head's going to be down, have it, you know, play with it, work around, see what sounds. Or even at eye level now, uh, yeah. Yeah. Right, right about here. Yeah, right there. Right yeah. About there. Or even side addressing a little bit, too. Yeah, I think, I think Mara, Mara, I think she does almost like a 90 degree angle right on the side. Oh, she comes in like this? Yeah. Angle. Like a little, not not as aggressive as Cliffs, but it's more, yeah, yeah even because, almost a little bit straighter sometimes. Yeah. Right about that. Because the plosives <laughs> then go out front. Yep. Yeah. You know, that's a big help. Well, let's see. Yeah, remember those plosives are like a. Remember the, do you remember the toys that you could buy as a kid? It was an air ball error. It was yeah, like a toy where you air blaster. Back, yeah, and you pull the plunger and then you squeeze it and it would shoot a ball of air that's across right. the room. Oh, yeah, yeah. You yeah, could yeah, make your little plosive. sister's hair go <laughs> like that. It was freaking hilarious. 430,000 children dislodge their uh, eardrums with oh, them. God. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> they'd hold it up to their ear, they'd push it. I mean, the, the, oh, are you saying they don't make it anymore? Oh, it's long gone. That and lawn darts. <laughs> lawn darts. Right? You don't have they lawn darts. Lawn darts. <laughs> <laughs> I love like a brilliant idea. Well, yeah. <laughs> okay, so that happened. But the ball of air goes straight out, and that's what happens with the plosives. So if the mic right. isn't yeah, in the sure. pop zone, you're you're good for yeah. the most part. Now, now, Cliff, I noticed you have the legendary windscreen on your 416 there. Is it windy in your, your studio? or? Um, No, I got a kitty cat. Oh, okay. <laughs> I try to keep it clean. Good Plus, idea. You know, and I, I'm I'm not I'm not voicing anything. You guys, you all know that. <laughs> I, I have my 416 for image, and it sounds good. And I talk to you one, and I love, and I got to own one. No, um, but you know, <laughs> check one two, check one two. Hello, hello. Sounds pretty much the same. Yeah, yeah <laughs> you know, I I just check one two. I just keep it on there to keep it clean because it's always out and always on. Yeah. I, um, I you all know about every people that are watching when it comes to plosives. If you've got a side address condenser microphone, 
Here's your capsule. You can see it through the grid. Take a pen or a pencil. Tape it right in the middle on the outside, above and below, if this was you know, a big capsule here. And when you speak, the wind hits the pen or pencil, goes and left and right. Dissipates, and yeah. you can cut down, dissipates. You can cut your plosives by 80%. So if you're doing, you know, if you got a little bit of plosives, they'll be completely gone. So capsule right here, lay it right out on the on the side of the body, tape above, tape below, right in the middle of the capsule. Give it a shot; it's amazing. Well, I'm going to be that guy. So if that works so well, why don't all the mics have that just built in, like a feature? We did it in LA when we were recording the best sounding vocals you could possibly imagine. Yeah, that's interesting. I've heard the the best microphones that we've only seen in pictures. I love it. Uh, give it a shot. If you've got an 87, if you've got a C12, if you've got a 414. You mean that, right would, act, that you... would actually make an 87 sound good? Oh, that sounds like a good idea. It, what, well, yeah. what it will do is it'll eliminate your plus. I'm not pulling right. any punches. <laughs> I don't like the 87 all that much, to be honest. You know what? I, it's great for overhead violin. Maybe because I haven't yeah. heard it in like, really good studios. It's a little hard. I've heard yeah. it in a lot you of know? bad studios. Yeah. Great mic, though. Yeah. Let, yeah. let me ask you about mics. Because the number one question we all get in our email, at least once a week, or we see on Facebook or in one of the one of the forums is, what's the best mic and you recommend it? Now, we sort of mentioned this earlier on, that people are always, like, you know, writing to us and and they want free advice. What makes a, a good voiceover microphone? I mean, we, I got a 416, you got a 416, you got a 416, you got a 416. Cliff has one. Well, I got a 416. Like over yeah. over here. Yeah. You get a 416. You get a 416. Got one. Overrated. <laughs> it is I, what I it is. If, is it your only microphone? Yeah. Jordan? Oh, no. no. What? <laughs> yeah, I, don't, I, yeah. I know for a fact that he's got mic. some others. Uh, yeah. I got rid of No, no. I mean, no, I use it. No, I have yeah. a lot. Uh, of course. Not, you know, not as many as I want. It's, but. It's one of many. I think the microphone that sounds familiar. You know, something that sounds familiar, sounds like something we hear on the radio, something that sounds like you, you know, something that's not tinny and boxy and something that has nice transparency, good dynamics, can handle proximity effect and sounds like you, you know, no color, least amount of uh, possible. Right. But a lot of mics have a lot of color. How can you tell? I mean, <laughs> there are a lot of people will go into, say, you know, into Banjo Emporium and they're like, oh, it's just a bunch of mics. Mm-hmm. Well, what, what good is that going to do? Because you don't record at Banjo Emporium. You're in your closet no, you or something. So well, wh- how, do you, how do you find closet. a good mic? I mean, if you're going, like if a lot of people are at conferences and they're like, the mic manufacturers are there and you put your headphones on. Like, oh, I love the way this one sounds. <laughs> yeah. <I'm> like, <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, you're also I, listening to like a $2,000 Odyssey headphones right, you know, or, and all this stuff. And the tube mic preamp. Right, yeah. exactly. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, you know, and that adds another problem because um, I've been going kind of through a headphone spree right now and I can't, mm. I don't, I still don't have an ultimate favorite. And I would argue that headphones are way more colored than microphones. Like if you put a U87 next to a, Ooh, what are those? Have you seen these that? yet? No, I'm trying to look for the logo. Nura. Is that the brand? I haven't heard of that. Yeah. Okay. Look at this. What the? Oh, no. cool. It goes in here and a cover. Okay. <laughs> nice oh, neat. but the problem like it's just going to make your life worse no. <laughs> yeah <laughs> so, i don't know yeah the only reason i brought these yeah, black friday's over so <laughs> that's that's <laughs> the, that's a black friday problem nice. anyway but yeah, but saying. the problem is is with not to like make it more dreadful for people but headphones have i argue are way more colored sounding than a back-to-back mic like if you took yeah, yeah, a, yeah, yeah. a u87 agree. versus a 416 you played them back to back same recording on audio technica m50 HXs. Those Decent, are the really popular good ones. St- studio you play them on those versus the five hundred dollar uh, Neumanns. They sound totally They're different. Awesome, by the way, they probably will sound good. Yeah. But the Neumanns have a big scoop in the mid range, and then the the Audio Technicas have a big boost in the low end. So it's made yeah. it sounds all resonant and big, but. Yeah. It's pretty. The really dramatic changes between headphones. Yeah, so it's like way more creative license in how to make a mi- headphone sound. Yeah. Than microphones. So yeah, there, right. there's software I use for it. It's called SonarWorks. Oh, um, I played around. With I, it I use it. Ago. It's yeah. like my religion. But that's that's next level stuff as yeah. far as like you don't need it for voiceover. But right. But it's nice to have that because you can hear it. it. It flattens out those differentiations between headphones, so you can hear how it's supposed to sound. Right. And um, but microphones, I would argue. They don't vary as much as headphones do. So just yeah, just be aware true. of that if you're listening to a lot of samples through one pair of headphones. If you have multiple pairs, just throw on like all, you know, same time, but 
switch between those headphones and try to hear the differences and note those differences if you're doing your own mic shootout in your own studio. Wouldn't it be better, though, to record with it so you can hear it back on your studio monitors, especially if you're... Sure. I mean... If you've got good studio monitors in a good room, most people don't. Oh, well, but we teach people how to do that. Oh, sure. Okay. <laughs> that's that's the point of the show. You know, you got, if you're going to use studio monitors, you can't have a reflective wall behind yeah. you. That sort of thing. But... Uh, yeah. But if you're using headphones, doing it in a store is not going to do it. You've got no, you've no, got no. to do it in the environment in which you yeah. record. Yeah, and I'm mainly talking about like when you're at home. If you don't, I just know most talent I know don't have a control room with acoustic panels and stuff with speakers, monitors. They have their one pair of headphones that they do all their work on, right. recording and editing. So that's why I brought that up. Just be okay. aware of that. If you have like two pairs, just throw both on when you're doing your your shootout at home. Right. So you can get another <laughs> flavor, another sound. To compare yeah so any thoughts one right of, one of the crappy ways to buy a mic is to go to bnh in new york city <laughs> because the room <laughs> terrible is one wall is all mirrors terrible. and the other is glass <laughs> they put the mirrors uh, you know it's for security so people don't go walking out with the uh, microphone it's for or you security. can see what you look like yeah it's for security know. slash it, it's a show ego and they want you to look in and go whoa man <laughs> look at me on a 416 now you i know? look better on a 416 than i do on an 87. yes <laughs> a lot of <laughs> selfies going on in that room <laughs> lots of duck faces yeah <laughs> can i just say that not everybody needs a 416. Ah, agreed and someday i'll say this to joseph Briano to his face but it's like <laughs> on long format i don't need joseph Briano yelling at me for an hour Right, right. <laughs> I mean that with all utter respect. Yeah, total respect. Yeah, absolutely. Well, all right. Well, we need your questions. So throw your questions in the chat room right now, whether you're on Facebook or you're watching on our our uh, our face on our regular or page. If you happen to be in the room, if you happen to be in the studio, if you've got a question, we'll get to that question in a little bit. Uh, but we're going to take a little break right now. Then George and I are going to say goodbye for this segment, and then we're going to set up for next week's show but you're watching live so you get to ask your questions now wow right here on voiceover body shop so don't right. go away this is anthony mendez and you're watching voiceover body shop your dynamic voiceover career requires extra resources to keep moving ahead now there's one place where you can explore everything the voiceover industry has to offer that place is voiceoverextra.com whether you're just exploring a voiceover career or a seasoned veteran ready to reach that next professional level stay in touch with market trends coaching products and services while avoiding scams and other pitfalls voiceover extra has hundreds of articles free resources and training that will save you time and help you succeed learn from the most respected Respected talents, coaches, and industry insiders. When you join the online sessions, bringing you the most current information on topics like audiobooks, auditioning, casting, home studio setup and equipment, marketing, performance techniques, and much more. It's time to hit your one stop daily resource for voiceover success. Sign up for a free subscription to newsletters and reports and get 14 bonus reports on how to ace the voiceover audition. It's all here at voiceoverextra.com. That's voiceoverxtra.com. Um, VoiceOverEssentials.com is still ringing in the new year. And for a short time only, get their improved voice-optimized headphones. These right here at a special 2020 savings. The VoiceOver Headphones 2.0. The latest edition of their best-selling voice-optimized headphones have arrived with 100% accurate transparent sound and the creature comforts voice actors deserve. None of the booming bass or shrill high-end found in other headphones, coupled with engineering that makes them an absolute joy to wear. Enhancements to the 2.0 headphones include a thicker, more comfortable headband, plus a new combo-coiled straight cord with mini plugs and a quarter-inch screw-on adapter, and a thicker felt-lined travel pouch. The fold-flat ear cup design gives the 2.0 cans a smaller footprint when traveling. And most importantly, we've boosted the mid-range clarity with reduced bass. These are usually $149. Now, 2020 off, $129.88. Eh, sort of. This introductory offer only lasts for a short time, so order now. It features the studio monitoring headphones, closed back over-ear design, more comfortable, thicker padded leather headband, leather-covered memory foam ear pads, and includes two gold-plated mini plugs 
and a studio standard quarter inch screw on adapter. New headphones, mini jack for cord replacements. It comes out just like that. Go over to voiceoveressentials.com right now and buy them while they're on sale. Hey, everybody, it's time to talk about Source Elements. You know who they are, the creators of Source Connect, that tool that you don't have. What? You don't have it? You should have it. It's that tool that allows you to connect your studio to other studios around the world so they can record you from your booth. Uh, it's a tool you should have because even if you're not being asked for it now, you might be asked for it tomorrow or in a month or in a year. You want to have it ready to go and know how to use it. It's really the heir apparent to ISDN technology, and it is definitely what the pros are using. You can go ahead and sign up for a 15-day free trial of Source Connect over at SourceElements.com. Get it up and running. Get your iLock account in order. There's a little video on there. I'll teach you how to do it by yours truly. And it'll help you get up and running so you can understand how it all works. Then that day that you get the gig, you can activate the license. It's a no-brainer. Give it a try. Thanks for your support, Source Elements. And we'll see you right after this break. I think I heard the voice of a body shop. I did! I did hear the voice of a body shop. Beat old body shop. Who's and we're that? back. Who's that guy? I, you know. <laughs> oh, that guy. Yeah. yeah. Bob Bergen. Yeah, here we are, still floating <laughs> in the ether here. I wanted to go for the full on satellite shot. Just turning. Beep. 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 Anyway, <laughs> good luck getting your legs around here. Anyway, uh,. Oh, that's that's the end of part one and George's knee, and uh, we'll be back with uh, with Jordan and Cliff and Roy uh, for our next week's show. But if you're watching it live, stick around and ask your questions here on uh, at VOBS TV or on Facebook, and uh, we'll get to your questions in the next segment. But right now, we need to uh, let you know that Tech Talk number twenty five will be on next week. Yep, if you're watching this in replay. Uh, but we do need to thank our donors of the week. Oh, we still have some. Of them. We do. Actually. These are all the people that still haven't figured out how to cancel their subscriptions, which we really appreciate. <laughs> yeah. Like my dad. Yes. Uh, Antland Productions. Uncle Roy. Uncle Roy. Roy. Yep. Uh, Graham Spicer. Joseph Harrison. Christy Burns. Michael Kearns. Karen O'Brien. Thank you very much, oh, Karen. She made a nice little puffy one. Yeah. Uh, Harlow Rodriguez. <laughs> puffy. Don <laughs> Griffith and Martha, Martha Kahn. Kahn. Thank you, everybody. Appreciate well, it. All righty. You can do just one-off uh, donations if we do something that you particularly liked. Like or, this year. Uh, or just do a little subscription thing once a month. It's a PayPal thing. You can sign up if you want. And just Any little amount is nice to have. Thank right. you. It's the Donate button Now button right on our website vobs.tv if you're watching it right there right now it's right there yeah, we're not doing that patreon thing no, no it's just if you want to give us money fine but whatever yeah. it's like we're busking on the corner if you really like what it is we're doing i tech here. busking exactly uh hey join our mailing list by the way uh and you get a notification about that all the time but uh, i think it's up to like 630 we'd like to get it up to a thousand because because the, because thousand that's right uh, also, uh, show us your booths. Now it's nice to see the universe here. There's probably a booth in there somewhere. There, there is, <laughs> but, uh, yeah. And some planet far, far away in another galaxy. Yeah, in a uh, but we want to see your booths and see what you guys are doing and how creative you are in setting up your voiceover studio at home. And remember to send them to us in landscape, not portrait. This is an Instagram story, folks. That's right. Yeah, so make sure you get that right. Uh, also, if you'd like to be in our studio, like uh, like Jeff Holman is in our studio right mm -hmm. now. He came in. He wanted to see the show live, and he came in. All you have to do is write to us at the guys at B-O-B-S dot T. Wave there, Jeff. Oh, okay, you missed him there. Uh, anyway, <laughs> write to us at the guys at B-O-B-S dot TV, which is also where you show your... Uh, there you go. Also where you show, uh, send us your, your booth picks and uh, we'll try and get it on here. And then it'll look like George and I are actually sitting in your booth, which will be really cool. Especially when you have like the VOBS logo on your, on your and monitor. really creepy. That's that, that too. Uh, we also need to thank our sponsors like Harlan Hogan's voiceover essentials. 
Uh, voiceover Extra. Source Elements. VOHeroes.com. VoiceActorWebsites.com. And J. Michael Collins Demos. All right. Also, the Dan and Marcy Leonard Foundation for the Betterment of Live Webcasting. Uh, and, of course, Sue Merlino, who did a fantastic job trying to get it done tonight with Shh. all this nonsense going She's on She's so us. tolerant. Absolutely. Anyway, that's going to do it for us this week. Stay tuned for... Tech Talk number 25, which we are going to record next. Stay on live if you can and send us your questions at Home Voiceover Studios. When else do you get a chance to talk to these guys about this kind of stuff? Anyway, that's going to do it for us right now. I'm Dan Leonard. I'm George Whittem. And this is v- Voiceover Body Shop or VO BS. Yes. It's been a couple of weeks since I did that. Mm. Have a great week, everybody. We'll see you.